Abi ne saline? O hamreyim mi bistu peyincim? O azaş kunde kocuma, şaraqi. O daş o saat ama vadime ne hoşkır. Ne maha mamız falatı. Ne alamet kutan. Madde bina adaleti. For most of humanity's history, conflict violence like rape, forced marriage, and sexual slavery was considered regrettable, but inevitable. However, due to decades of advocacy, sexual and gender-based violence is now widely recognized not only as a human rights violation, but a serious crime. To help bring perpetrators to justice, UN Women and Justice Rapid Response have created a global roster of investigators who can deploy quickly when and where they're needed the most. In the ongoing conflicts in Syria and Iraq, these investigators have assisted the United Nations, supported by the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, to expose these crimes. In August 2014, um, the uh, so-called Islamic State, or Daesh, attacked uh, the Sinjar region in Iraq, and uh, they attacked especially the Yazidi and Christian minorities living there. there is a possibility in the German law for a state to start a humanitarian admission program. And that's what we did. We decided to take in up to 1,000 women and children that suffered traumatizing violence from Daesh. But many of the women, they wanted to have justice. They demanded to give testimony about what has happened. Rabia al Gharani is a former police detective who is an international investigator on the Justice Rapid Response UN Women roster. She deployed to the UN Independent International Commission of Inquiry for Syria and also with the UN's Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights on their investigation mission to Iraq. I met Rabia in 2014. I immediately recognized that it was very helpful that she was a woman because uh, many of the traumatized women would not be ready to talk to men about what has happened. For me it's important when I interview survivors that they feel comfortable. Not only the support to speak the language, but to understand the cultural aspect. How should we approach survivors? How should we respect them? What should we take into consideration? Helps also to be a police woman because we have the investigation uh, experience and to know how to investigate, how to ask the right questions, which questions you should not ask, which direction you want to go while you hear the story and what you want to collect. What we received as a proof of evidence, we collect it and we keep it till one day a tribunal will be established.
Erin is also an investigator on the Justice Rapid Response UN Women roster, who deployed to the UN Commission of Inquiry on Syria. Erin asked that her face be hidden for this film. I worked in San Francisco uh, Police Department and District Attorney's Office as an investigator for 11 years and then started doing work on the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia and did that for many years. At the time that I came on to the Commission of Inquiry for Syria, the conflict was already well into at least eight months. You know, one of our first challenges is to find victims. The survivor of, a, of sexual violence in conflict may have not told anyone just out of fear of whether it's reprisal, of embarrassment, of a stigma. It's sort of an investigation within an investigation where you have to know the community and the culture. So maybe it's not being reported, but maybe you're learning that men and women have been separated in particular areas, or a spike in miscarriages, a spike in attempted suicides. All of these may be indicators. One way investigators locate survivors is through healthcare providers. In the Zatari refugee camp in Jordan, medical workers treating Syrian victims have often been the first to identify signs of rape or torture. I went to Zatari camp and immediately went to speak to the different clinics and hospitals that were set up there, and I met Dr. Hala. Dr. Hala was a great resource in learning about sexual violence, what others had experienced, what she was seeing. I'm Hala, a Syrian doctor. When I started uh, work in Zatari camp in a clinic, because I was the only female doctor at that clinic at that time, I received a lot of cases that was suffering from sexual violations. What was incredibly important about meeting Dr. Hala was the medical evidence. That's the type of evidence that I know later holds up in court. Yes, two marks. Yes, two marks. Yeah. There is a lot of consequences for sexual violence physical symptoms and signs like fractures, transmitted diseases, also trauma for several parts of the body. But the most important consequences is the psychological one because it lasted for a long time and maybe lead to suicide. So we have to do something as professionals, as a doctor, to document these cases because it's not enough just to provide services for the victim. Also, you have to give them maybe hope that they can punish the perpetrator one day to bring the justice to their lives, and that will keep the peace in the community. You are doing great work. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I am so happy that you're here. Uh. In addition to patterns of rape of both women and men, the UN Commission of Inquiry for Syria has also documented harassment at checkpoints, forced marriages, forced conversions, and kidnapping. I am Beriva, and I'm 27 years old. I grew up in Syria. I studied English and linguistics, also playing and studying music. In 2010, when the like, revolution started in Damascus, most of us we were thinking that even though we know that we might not win, but at least we just, we, we are trying, you know? As the war escalated, Bervin began operating makeshift clinics to provide emergency medical services in Yermuk camp. As an unmarried woman in a conflict zone, Bervin was kidnapped by an Islamist rebel group. It was at night when they, they came. I just saw men, like really like tall men with, with weapons and you know, like they have masks. Then they took me. First day, they were really aggressive. Why you are not virgin? You are such a whore, like you don't marry and you, you know, like for me it was really a shame, you know, really harm. Like why you are asking this? There was like um, Imam who was like trying to orient me to the Islam and how to be a good woman. At that time, I was really, really scared that they will marry me to a sheikh or like to a leader. 
and then this is, will be the end. After being held for nine days, Bervin was finally released by her kidnappers, only to face more violence, including sexual violence, before she managed to escape from Syria. Rabia interviewed Bervin as part of the UN's investigation. My first impression about Bervin is she was a very strong activist in Syria, but that she lost all the hope due to the war. At that time, actually, I lost my belief and my trust of international uh, organizations. When I met Rabia, I said, oh, okay, she will be uh, the same person. They just like want to do a report and then go, you know? But no, for me, it was like a little bit different. She was really like sensitive, really respectful. And I remember her face when she was like talking with me. And um, she really have like this face of, really she's with me, you know, like, and it's important somehow like to feel like some support, you know, to get some support. So one day in the future, I think we all hope that some sort of court will be set up. You will have all these years of the work that the Commission of Inquiry has done, all the interviews, all the information, the evidence that it has gathered to be used in such a court. This is where the Justice Rapid Response and UN Women Partnership comes in. This partnership has created a roster of experts with more than 200 strong. Expertise that had the background, the training, the cultural, social, and legal affinity to be able to investigate these crimes within the cultural context in which they occurred. Yale Women is happy to partner with Justice Rapid Response because together we make a formidable team. We are able to attract expertise and support of governments. We are able together to work with civil society. We are able to generate the trust of those on whose behalf we work. The women that are affected by the situation, because you know, justice delayed is justice denied. <laughs> Thank you.